Hey guys, what's happening? It's your boy Lex. All right, so something brand new, not only to the channel, but new for me as well. All right, so I've been playing Clash Royale for quite some time. Um, I have never really got into the competitive scene, you know, uh, of the game per se, as in like terms of, terms of um, you know, tournaments and brackets and um, game battles and that sort of stuff. So my, my, my buddy here, Gabzip, he, he kept uh, bugging me to get on game battles. He wants me to play some game battles. And listen, you guys have heard me say before, I'm a, just an average player. That's what I consider myself as just an average player. I know a few different deck archetypes and I can play them reasonably well, but not like great or anything. Anyway, so he's like, all right, well, let's play a game battles match. So my first, this is my first ever game battles match right here. We get matched up with some guys from adult esports. Shout out to them. Um, and they come in and there was... There are three players. It's three, three versus three, the best of three. So this first one here, Memo wins. Um, so just, you know, these are all really good players, right? So Memo here is at 4607 uh, is this highest. Really very, very good. Um, let's see, who was the other one that was with them? Oh, yeah, it was uh, this guy right here. Uh, Kraus X20 God YouTube. If he has a YouTube channel, I don't know if it does. I'll check. I'll see if he does. I'll put it down in the description below, and you guys can check him out as well. Um, really great. He's 53-53. Wonderful. Um, and then their third player here is Star Wars, who is, who is one of the better players around, honestly. He, uh, let's see, last season, let me see. Yeah, he was 61-67 last season, 357 in the world. It's pretty stinking good. They set the lineup that um, it was going to be Gab playing first, and then uh, our other teammate, Tiger, and then me last. Um which would have been fine. However, again, this is my first game battles ever that I've played, and Star Wars was going last, their best player. So, honestly, I was really hoping that we'd win the first two sets so I wouldn't have to play because I didn't want to have to let down the team. So, so Gab played this first one right here. Um, they both played some, well, no, he played, they both played Night Witch's decks, um, and Memo won that one. And the, the second one here, Gab had played his uh, Hog Lightning deck that he plays a lot on ladder, and he's pretty darn good at it. So he won that one. And, the, and then the last game, let's just watch this. We'll watch it quickly here. Um, so uh, Gabs is playing a Golem Night Witch deck, and Memo is playing the deck that he used in the first match, uh, which is a giant baby dragon uh, and Night Witch lightning. Pretty strong deck. So we're going to go ahead and just put this a little bit fast speed. Uh, Memo pumps. Gab plays a Golem. You know, they both kind of wash out a little bit. They both each get some damage. Well, Gab actually gets uh, some more damage on his tower than um, Memo got on his. So they're lightening each other's pumps, trying to keep the elixir in check. Um, he pulls them up here, but quite a bit of damage gets put down on uh, Gab's tower right there. Um, with the Mega Minion coming back, he doesn't make it. Another lightning thrown out again, still trying to keep those pumps in check. There's only 40 seconds left, so Gab drops a Golem with the Night Witch behind. Uh, kills that giant really quick. Now, have you guys noticed that the, the Night Witch, um, not only is her attack really strong, but when she starts spawning those bats, it's, it gets pretty ridiculous. So right here is the end of the game. Uh, Gab has a Lightning lined up, and he finishes it off there. So we win the first set of three. Uh, Gab Zip beats Memo. Really good games. Um, and then... So next up is Tiger, who Tiger, let's check out his profile. He's one of our players. Uh, last season was 55-53, so Tiger's a really good player himself. Um, I by far was <laughs> not the worst player, but definitely if we were looking at pure trophies, I, I definitely haven't done as well as my two teammates here. Um, so he loses the first match here, 1-0. Uh, it's really hard to play a hog deck, even a hog lightning deck, which you have to rely a lot on the lightning when the other player has a tornado. And let's face it, most people are running with tornado. And then, so they, so um, Kraus here won the first game. And so they hop into the second game and Tiger is playing, um, looks like a graveyard. Let's speed this up a little bit here. Graveyard, baby dragon. Oh, that's right. He's playing Splash Yard, basically is all this is. Uh, I don't know if he subbed in the Night Witch, which I've, I've been doing some on some challenges too. It's just the standard Splash Yard deck, but instead of the Electro Wiz, just use the Night Witch. And it, it's been working pretty pretty well for me. Um, so if you guys have those cards, you might want to try, try out that deck. So he's playing the pretty much, well, he's not playing the very traditional Splash Yard. Well, some people play the Mega Minion instead of the Electro Wizard. And that's what uh, Tiger here was doing. He's playing the, the Mega Minion. So, uh... And, you know, Kraus is playing, again, that giant Night Witch. Uh, he's just using Goblin Gang and Poison um, rather than the Lightning that the other his teammates were using earlier. 
So they got a pretty good game going here. I think I think this one goes down a little bit pretty deep into the match. Let's speed it up here. But while this is playing here in fast time, we're getting prepared. See, in in my head here, I am like dying here for Tiger to win. So because if he wins, then you know he could potentially win this match, and it's gonna not come down to me in the end, right? Um, so. Yeah, it was uh, close, but then right there, Kraus pulled it off and he swept the series, or the, he swept that match, the matches there with Tiger. You know, shout out to him, very well played. And so then it comes down to me, right? And so in in, in Discord, my teammates are laughing at me because you know they they figure I stand no chance. And honestly, let's be just let's just be real for a second here. I thought I stood no chance at all, but I told him in Discord, you know what, I'm probably going to lose, but I am going to give it my best you know i'm gonna play the best i possibly can so um they were talking me up uh, you know that lex is his daddy no um so let's let's watch this first match here against star wars um i am playing um it's his deck with an executioner knight night witch graveyard it's a, it's a graveyard poison deck with an executioner tornado and a night witch so nothing you know crazy or anything and he is playing the same deck that uh a couple of them have played before, actually, that you just saw Kraus beat Tiger with that um, the giant uh, Mega Minion, you know, Night Witch deck. And I've been doing this a lot when I've been playing. I've been seeing, the, of course, Night Witch a ton in challenges. And if you're playing Poison, I usually just like to go ahead and drop the Poison, catch the Tower and the Night Witch. If, if they're not really rushing you or anything and you can afford to wait it out. Because um, then you, very little troops will take care of the Night Witch and you get the damage on the Tower... She doesn't do anything to you, and it you know makes it a little bit harder. So he comes in here with a split push. Um, so I've got to protect both of them. I mean, I, I can't. I'm going. I'm going to take some damage. <clears throat> I mean, but he pretty well go, goes broke on this on this attack. Um, but his his mega minion there is, is you know not not doing me really well here. And I'm trying to be patient. I I don't know if you guys do this as well, but when I'm playing, I always feel like that I just really rush things sometimes and I get way too aggressive and so I've been really working on here I've been playing a lot of challenges and I've been trying to really work on just being patient I tell you what it's been really working out I've won at one point I won three 12 win challenges back to back to back um, so it's been working out pretty well see I didn't rush it right there I could have dropped a graveyard but I just it wasn't the time he had his minions ready look he has minions queued up if I would have dropped the graveyard it would have been pointless. I, I would have gotten wrecked there. I would have spent five elixir and gotten nothing back out of it. So he comes in a pr the pretty hard push here. My poison did catch those minions. And then my night witch stopped the giant with, you know, only getting one shot on the tower. And I was able to activate my king's tower with the tornado. So, I mean, I pretty much spent everything I had there. I, he is having to address my uh, night witch, which my night witch witch um, takes care of his mega minion where I really don't have to do anything else to it. Mega minion is going to die. Uh, if the Mega Minion you lose is more than like 10-15% health, your tower will take care of it. He starts a big push on the other side, and I figured now is my chance to make a move. So I went with the Graveyard Poison. And I, I took the Poison and just killed the minions. I, I didn't know. Maybe they wouldn't have even had to... Maybe I didn't have to use that, because I don't know if they would have went toward the tower, but I was afraid that they were going to push back towards the tower and then take out my... Uh, my graveyard. He comes with a pretty hard push with a Night Witch, a Mega Minion, and a Miner. And I try to get them all to the middle so that my uh, Executioner could turn around and take care of it. And it worked out pretty well. Um, I, I did take some serious damage on the other side from their Miner, but it's really about all I could do at that point. Um, I went ahead and went aggressive with the other side with the Night Witch and the uh, Graveyard. He drops his Night Witch, but I have my Poison right there that's going to kill his Goblin Gang and pretty much kill his Night Witch as well. So that was a pretty pretty solid play. That brings him down pretty critical health there. And he's got to do something here to stop my Bats and my Knight. But I've got my Night Witch coming to and I've got enough for my Graveyard. I just, I got him in a pretty good Elixir disadvantage and I was able to capitalize on that right there. So first match in, I'll tell you what, I was pretty excited. I didn't even know if I was going to win another match, but I won the first match. And I was I was stoked just to win the first match. So that was, you know, pretty cool. Um, Star Wars obviously didn't like his friend's deck, but it wasn't the deck he would probably normally be playing with. But, you know, so we jump into the second match and I'm feeling a little bit more confident. I'm thinking, hey, you know, OK, so I'm not completely outgunned here. You know, I can, I can at least hang with the fella. Um, he, he's probably he, he's better than me, but at least I know I can hang with him. So uh, next match going in here. He has a giant, he's playing a giant Graveyard Night Witch Poison, which is just a ridiculous deck. It's really strong. I, I switched over to my deck that um, 
I played on ladder a lot, which is again what I was just talking about a graveyard uh, or it's a splash yard deck with a night witch instead of an electro wiz. So, again, just like I was talking about before, I went ahead and just poisoned the witch, the night witch right here. So that way, if he goes to support it, he's not going to get a lot of value out of the night witch. He switches lanes on me and instantly goes giant graveyard on the other side, which catches me. Uh, in a bad spot so the most I can do here is put a baby dragon and just pray that I can get enough uh, so I don't lose the tower I don't lose the tower and I've got a pretty good counter push coming back but man I'm, I'm broke <laughs> and I didn't really want to play anything else so I was just hoping that maybe I could get some damage in here and he was pretty well broke too because of course that's a it's a very expensive push that he did and here I got my my baby dragon I was ended up going and placing a graveyard he did play the poison which you know really hurts a lot but even with a poison, when you poison a graveyard, if the spawns from the graveyard uh, get close up to the tower, they don't die instantaneously. They will, they can get a you know shot or two off. Plus, my baby dragon was sitting there wailing on the tower, so I almost evened it up right there. My his, his left side tower there is actually I'm I've got got him uh, on that. So I go ahead and start off a big push, and you know I figure I got to go. And then he drops a giant way in the back. I know that I'm going to have to try to do something to defend on the left-hand side because he's going to be stacking up a good push. So I figured, okay, so let me get enough defense in my left-hand side to not completely get owned on that, and then I'll see what I can do on the other side. I don't know if much. I went and put a Night Witch over there with that, and then my baby dragon with the tornado there, and I figured that would pretty well mop up the rest of it on, on the other side. The Night Witch it did not die like I, I wanted to right there, so I had to you know chip in with a little bit extra took his right hand tower with the night witch in the bowler which was great and I had enough for a, a graveyard on the other side and this is where I made a mistake right here I should not have poisoned that graveyard I should have just let it be he was going to take the tower I should have just let it go uh, but I didn't and so now he's up you know by like three elixir on me and that's going to put me at a you know a disadvantage because right here I mean I have I'm in the driver's seat right now his his left hand tower is completely um it's halfway gone and uh mine is completely full now i know he I, I knew he was going to be dropping graveyard in you know right there in, in the center and i did the best that i could there it's a it's a hard push to counter honestly but i do got a decent amount of troops coming back up and i was pretty full on elixir i wouldn't drop the knight which i don't know if that was the play that i should have made right there i was just trying to i don't know i was trying to get a massive push and just go ahead in the game right here uh he played some good defense and i wasn't able to pull it off there but i know what's coming we all know what's coming. Giant in the pocket and graveyard on my tower. Bowler gets one passing shot in there. Uh, it's down to 600. I'm thinking if, if I can just hold off, play some good defense right here, then maybe, just maybe, I will be able to, um, you know, hold off and get this. So I get him back there. I got a bunch of troops coming. 600. All I need is a graveyard poison. Just a couple hits from a graveyard on there. I mean, I'm looking at this thinking this should be it right here, right? Throw down my poison. Ugh. It's so close. It's so close. But he's in within poison range now. All I need is one more poison on that tower. I'm thinking, can I cycle quick enough to get to it? I tried to put extra pressure on him right there with a with a um, baby dragon. I, I knew he was coming, so I instantly pulled away his giant so that my left-hand target would retarget onto the uh, graveyard right there. He poisons. I poison. It's a race to the end, but he's got a log. He's got a log. 48 hit points. Oh, rip. Such a close game. You know, that was a really good game. Very good game, well played by him. That's probably the deck that I feel the most comfortable with, uh, but it was a good game. Um, my, my teammates say, Lex, you had him. I, I, I should have. I should have won that game, but he played some good defense on there, so I can't take that away from him. So last game, this is for all the marbles. Okay, so he, if I win, my team wins. If he wins, his team wins. This is literally bottom of the ninth, two runners on, we're down by three. I or down by two. I got to hit a home run to take care of all this, right? You know, this is it. This is it. So he goes. He switching. I I, I switch back to the first deck that I played against him that I won against, and um, I, I didn't have my poison. I would have liked to have poison right there. I didn't have it. So I went ahead and just went and played the uh, executioner. Um, he's gonna go with a knight. And the miner, the miner caught me a little off guard, and he's got a poison, so he's playing minor poison. I still didn't know if he had a graveyard yet, um, but I know that night witch and miner is a pretty stinking awesome combo. I mean, you drop off a night witch and a miner, and you've got to address both of them pretty good. Um, now I do have the tornado, but 
He placed the Biner right there on the top left corner, which I can't tornado that to my tower. And he's playing some really good defense. If you watch these next few defensive series, um, it's like a class, it's just like seriously like a school on how to defend a a lone executioner for only three elixir or no two elixir scratch it. So that's a three elixir positive trade for him. He, all he does is just put down some skeletons off to the side and then uh, I spirits the executioner. I learned something from that. So again, he puts his uh, miner in a spot where I can't tornado it. So I'm going to have to just go ahead and take care of this the best I can. Uh, executioner is going to take care of the night witch. Now I'm, I'm down pretty bad. Half my tower is down. There's only a minute and a half left. I've got to do something, right? I've got to do something or else I'm going to be in trouble. Again, look at that. Ice spirit and then the skeletons and it's off to the side. That's textbook right there, guys. Didn't get a single shot off. So I'm sitting there waiting. I was full, but I wanted him to play first. So you went in, as soon as he dropped that Night Witch, I went in and put Night Witch Graveyard and pushed all the way in. Electro Wizard is not a good counter to Night Witch. That's probably all that he had at the moment. But um, she kills the Electro Wizard pretty quick. And then the bats spawn. It's just, it's ridiculous. The Night Witch is better when she's dead than when she's alive. It's kind of crazy. So I did some pretty critical damage over there on the top right-hand side. So now I'm thinking all I've got to do is get one more just decent push. It doesn't have to be a great push, right? Um, he gets his miner in a spot this time where I can tornado, activate my tower. That's really going to help me out going forward. All I need to do is play some defense and get one decent push on the other side, right? So he plays his knight. Um, I figure, okay, I just got to stop the knight. Here's a decent log value because I got skeletons, ice spirit, and the um, knight. I, I guessed wrong on his minor placement. He's switching the minor placement up pretty good after that. And so I just went I just went on all all in for it right here. Night Witch Graveyard. The Night Witch is already making it pretty close in. As soon as I see that get, the bats get there, I know it's done. Game over. Right here in 15 seconds, I gotta defend one more push. He's gonna try to get into one more push right here. Tornado. I'm just gonna yank this. I'm just gonna yank the miner away. Gotta get the miner out of there. Uh, then I just gotta get something to stop that E-Wiz because it's gonna tear me up. Yep, knight's there in time. Three, two, one. Good game. So Lex here in his first ever competitive matches brings home the victory for SOAW, Son of a Witch Esports, when we were playing off against uh, Adult Esports, going in against a very great player in Star Wars. So, you know, good game, well played all around. Um, <laughs> my teammates, they didn't believe in me. Like I said, I told you, I didn't believe in me, so it is what it is. But um, if you guys like this content, uh, not just the replays, but I'm, I'm talking about in general, you know, competitive matches, let me know, and I will see if I can play some of these matches live, um, and I can, you know, not only get some of my clan mates games in there, and I can kind of set the scene for when I'm playing, and you can see them play as well. I think they'd be pretty interesting. You guys let me know if that's something you're interested in, because I don't want to put the effort into a video that you don't want to see. So, anyways... That's uh, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. My first introduction to competitive matches was quite the doozy, quite the doozy. My literally my hand was shaking after the matches. It was it was an adrenaline rush. It was pretty awesome. So, and if you guys aren't into competitive sports and competitive sports, competitive esports, uh, the competitive side of Clash Royale. Check out game battles, you know, talk with your clan. Maybe you guys can get the game battles a team together. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out.